All right then, um, welcome, welcome um, to today's webinar. Um, this webinar is going to discuss the benefits of it, benefits, oh, them words out, benefits of Education City and how it can impact your teaching. Um, so I don't know um, currently at the moment if you're avid users of Education City, if you're relatively new to it, if you haven't yet used Education City yet, or um, you're looking into it, um, feel free to pop a little bit about yourself in the chat feature. What I want to do today is just um, everything is kind of not as it should be at the moment. So I want to tell you those parts of Education City that can help. Um, and we're all about sort of helping educators at Education City. Um, I myself am an ex-educator, along with a couple of my colleagues back at the office, um, or ex-teachers as well. Um, and we sort of put all of our effort and time into making Education City as time-saving and as impactful as remotely possible. So um, for this webinar, these are the sort of key areas, if you like, we're going to be having a look at. Um, the marked assessments and data tracking, um, whether you use a specific um, assessment resource when it comes to your end of year assessments or your termly assessments. I'm just going to touch upon the assessments that Education City has to offer and how the fact that they're marked for you can obviously um, impact your day-to-day -day teaching, saving you a lot of time, a lot of time there. Um, and obviously then moving on to our mark tasks as well. And then again, for those of you who are users of Education City, that will be the activities that are marked for you. And linked with those are our learn screens, which are pre-made slideshows. I may have magpied that from um, a teacher I did some training with a couple of weeks ago. Um, she called them pre-made slideshows. I liked it, I magpied it. Um, so, and then we're gonna have a bit of a look at our time-saving planning. Now, if at any point you've got any questions about what I'm going to show you, any questions in general, I do encourage you to ask them. I really do, I love to hear from you. Um, on your taskbar, around the middle for me, there's a button called Q&A. You can all see that, okay? Um, but what that enables you to do is to ask a question. You can ask it anonymously um, if you wish to, um, but that will ping up on my screen and then I'll be able to answer those for you um, as quickly as I can. Obviously, we do have the chat feature, but just be aware that doesn't kind of have the same kind of ping up um, quality to it. Um, I'm being very technical today. Um, but yeah, just be aware that I won't get round to that as quickly as I would if you were using the Q&A button. Um, now, also, the um, account I'm going to be using, you know the drill. As always, it is a made-up school. So no names are real. They are all made up. No GDPR issues there. Um, it is also an English account as well, um, but I will point out any sort of differences of, as I'm going through if you're joining me today from outside of England. Um, and if you're joining me from Wales, happy St. David's Day. Uh, there we go. Fantastic. Right, let's head into Education City and we can get started. Here we are, logged into my account. Now, if you're following along at home, absolutely fine. Your page might look um, a little differently to the one on my screen. That is the classic view if it's got all the tiles across here um, instead of down here. That's absolutely fine. You can use that view if you wish to. I just prefer this view. It's got a lot of new features to it and it's got a better flow to it as well. So you can click on the ribbon just there and it will bring you to this screen if you wish to follow along. And we are gonna start in our assessments and there they are just there. Now, obviously because everything on Education City is mapped to your curriculum. So if you're in England, it's mapped to the um, National Curriculum 2014. If you're in Scotland, it's mapped to the Curriculum for Excellence um, as are all of our assessments. So if I click onto the assessments tile just here, what you'll find is that you can set an assessment for a class or a group, so really good for differentiation. I'm just going to go for that class just there. And you'll see you've got access to all 
of the year groups assessments. Now, the benefit of that means that you can obviously have a look for any um, gaps in learning due to COVID. Um, you can set assessments for um, the previous academic year as well as the next academic year to see whereabouts your students are at. Um, and the students don't know what um, level that is. What they'll see is the title that you've given the assessment. So you can sort of, for, exam for example, use a year three one for year four, year four one for year five, a P2 one for P3, and so on and so forth. Um, and what you'll find is there are a range of assessments. So you can see um, I'm in English. Let's go to English just here. And you'll see there are formative and summative reading comprehensions, as well as end of year spelling assessment and punctuation and grammar assessment. And then maths and science, they will both have um, uh, formative and summative assessments in there as well. And again, they will differ depend upon the curriculum that you use. Um, but the benefit of um, our assessments is that they are all marked for you. That's right. You've not got to worry about doing any marking when it comes to education city assessments. You select the assessment that you're after. Um, let's go for an English one. Why not? And let's go for Dairy Farmer's Diary. Why not? Go for that one. Um, you select your assessment like so. You select the time frame that you wish for this assessment to be published between. So again, you could schedule this if you know that your assessment week is going to be after half term. You can do that. If you know in the summer term when you're having your assessment week, you can do that as well. Um, and if I schedule from today, for example, you can see currently it's for seven days. And I can shorten that for two days just there or extend it for a few more. So you really can sort of plan ahead using Education City. And as I mentioned, as the assessments are marked for you, that's all you've got to do, these four steps that I'm showing you. You select your class or your group, you select the assessment, you put in the timeframes, and you pop in the title. Now, um, quick tip, top tip for you. Um, if you're type, typing in the title, I'm just going to pop um, a dairy farmer so I know which one it is. Perhaps if I can spell, there we go. Um, what's worthwhile doing is obviously popping in the title, that sort of subtitle just there, just because then you will know which assessment it is that you've chosen. Also, if you are anything like me, um, it's always worthwhile popping the date that you've chosen to publish it by after it. A, because um, if your memory is appalling, you'll be able to notice, like me. Um, but also, if you decide to use the assessment more than once, um, it gives you some great grounds for comparative data. Um, in the success tracker, which I'm going to come to in a moment. So really, really useful that. Um, dairy farmer, that's the date it's set for. We can have a look at all of that. And all we do then is press finish. And it's as easy as that to um, submit an assessment. Now your students will log in, they'll complete that assessment. It's marked for you. And the benefit for this one, as it's a formative um, assessment, not only will it get marked for you, but each student that completes this assessment will receive a revision journal. And that will be um, comprised of prescribed content, all based upon the questions that they've each gotten incorrect. So it is completely individualized to each student. And if you do have a student that maybe scores 100%, um, what it will do is it will look at maybe those resources that they spent a lot of time answering. If, for instance, they took a lot of time answering questions about, um, I don't know, what's this one? Diary farmer, uh, dairy farmer, sorry, not a diary farmer. Um, if this one took a, quite a bit of time uh, finding the paragraph, it will pop a couple of resources in about the paragraph. So there's always that kind of work for them to do to build upon their own learning independently. There we go. So those marked assessments are as easy as pie. So, so easy to set. And I said, once they're marked for you as well, you can head into the success tracker. Here it is just here. And you can have a look at those results. Now, the benefit here as well is because um, the activities are marked, 
you can have a look for a term, a half term, an academic year, or if you, like I said, if you know when assessment week is going to be, you can always look for that week. And you can have a look for a class, a group, or an individual again. Um, so really, really useful this is, and you'll see why in a second. So you can see here, I've got all my students here. I can obviously filter down by their surname just there. And I can see any assessments or activities that have been completed by them down here. There are certain things I'm not really bothered about when it was accessed or um, I'm not really bothered about sort of the subject area at the moment. So what I can do is I can edit those columns, click onto edit columns, and I can take out the areas that I'm not really fussed about. And I can add in the areas that I am. Things like wanting to know the date of birth. If you're looking for comparative data um, for sort of your youngest in the year group compared to your oldest. Gender even, again, if you're looking for that sort of gender com um, comparison between English and maths or literacy and numeracy. Um, but then you've got things such as curriculum objectives that have been met or the questions they had available and the number of questions that they attempted. And if we click on OK now, you'll see any curriculum objectives that have been met. There we go. Questions they had available, questions that were answered, or questions that were attempted, I should say. And we can even click into one of those to have a look specifically at what questions they didn't attempt. So really, really valuable this because you can also export it to an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so you can edit, you can adapt it, you can apply it to whatever tracking system you use in your school. Um, but all the data is there for you. And like I said, you can even have a look for an individual student. Um, to have a look for Henry just there and you can see what that one student has been up to and have a look at that specific data for him even sharing it at parents evenings um, if you wish to as well so those are the marked assessments and data tracking and I've touched upon very briefly those activities that are marked for you as well but let's head into the subjects area here it is just here the little um, pencil and ruler icon. I'm going to head into English or literacy just to give you an example here. Now these are the ones that are marked for you these activities as long as your students are logged in any activities that are completed are marked and all that data is placed in this, um, the success tracker like I've shown you. And it's great, you can have a look, you can filter down by those units or by those specific um, subject areas. Let's have a look. If you're looking for something to do with capital letters, you click on that and you've got those resources there for you. So you can really narrow down what it is that you're after by that filter just there. In many cases, if we click on an activity, it will tell you if there is a learn screen attached. And a learn screen is what we refer to as our pre-made slideshows, that uh, magpie term that I took earlier. Um, the benefit of the learn screens is that they are fantastic for independent learning. They really encourage students to take control of their own learning. You can see they've got like a video um, sort of function here. They can play, they can play. rewind, they can fast forward. They can pause, you can segment and blend here, or they can move on to the next slide using play. the slide selector just here. So you can see this is really, really invaluable. And it's also the sort of thing you could probably use um, there we go, we've got a question there. The sort of thing you can pop onto the whiteboard, correctly. work with a group, Steve work with your class. With the so you can see, because this has got an orange bar underneath it, that means there's a question. So you've got Steve wanted to with the kitten. And you can listen to each of those Steve to find to out which is the correct answer. The play, and if you get that right, to. Great. If not, you can always go back and try again. So they really are sort of those pre-made slideshows. They are so, so useful, so, so invaluable. 
as a teacher, as an educator, you can pause them, you can rewind, you can fast forward, you can use each slide if you wish to for a different lesson's worth of learning. They are so, so handy. And as I mentioned, a lot of the activities you'll find are linked with a learn screen. So you've got those tasks that are marked for you. They're linked with these pre-made, I scroll through using these buttons just here, linked with these pre-made PowerPoint presentations just there as well. All of it designed to save you time. You've not got to worry about um, creating PowerPoint presentations in your PPA time. You've not got to worry about um, finding worksheets or finding um, activities for the children to do because all of our activities come with activity sheets as well. There we go. You can see that it's got all of that ready for you. So marked assessments, marked activities, pre-made slideshows, data tracking system. And on top of all that, you can plan using Education City as well. If I head back to the homepage, you'll see you've got classwork and homework. In many cases, schools decide to have um, their classwork as maybe nine to three work and their homework as anything after that. Or in the current circumstances, it could be classwork is what they do in school, homework is what they do out of school, whatever appeals to you. It's entirely up to you to do so. And it's really, really simple. You can create a folder new classwork just there, new homework as well. We can pop in the title of this folder of work. Um, let's do, let's do times tables just there. Why not create that folder, pop the resources in as you need to. There we go. Find a couple of those. I'm just going to pop those in just there. Um, but you can really sort of filter down. You can use those, um, filters just there. You can use the filters in the subjects area, the search content just there as well. And then you can work your way through publish to students, publishing that time frame again, as we did with those um, assessments and tracking who's done what. Now, the benefit of that tracking tab as well is that it's linked to the work overview just here. You can find a folder of work that you've published so let's go for my measurements one. And you'll be able to see really easily, really clearly by this color coded system here, who is where. And we can even sort of cross a couple of those out if we're looking for only the students who have scored that percentage or above, or if we're just looking at only the students who haven't attempted it yet. All these students are fake, they don't really do much. Um, and you can also click to see more detail just there. And that will open up that folder of work for you as well. So those, for me, are those key areas. Those are the things that are gonna help save you time and they're gonna have the biggest impact. They save you time. It means that you can sort of work on other things. And it obviously gives you that time back in the classroom with the students, hopefully back to normal in a bit. Fingers crossed. So I've not got any questions just here. Do ask. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through our FAQs just in case any of these are in, of any interest to you. Um, these are things that, um, that we do get asked quite often. Um, things such as how do you add users? Do students need their own login? The answer to that would be yes. Your students have their own login. It means that they can complete their work um, and that work gets marked for you. And it's really, really easy to add users, really simple. Head over to the manage users area. And what you want to do is use the upload and edit for the whole school and the add student for individual students. Now, if you do need a little bit more information, you can use the help centre down that right hand side just there. You click on that, you can type in phrase such as upload students, and you've got um, how to upload and edit students in bulk, little videos you can watch just there, really, really handy. Um, and what you'll also find is that there are 
past webinars on here as well. There's a really good webinar that talks you through every single step of uploading users in book as well. And like I said, as long as students are logged on, um, A, they're getting the best of Education City because you can assign that work to them. But also, it helps you. The work gets marked for you. You've got that instant, okay, this is where that student is at. This student needs more support. That student needs pushing on to the greater depth. Really, really useful there. How do I set work? How do I make a My City folder? We've just gone over that um, in terms of creating those planning folders. Remember, you can use them for planning or you can publish them to students. It doesn't matter either way. Can other teachers see my My City folders? No, they can't. And the reason behind that, um, really quite simple, in that if I show you my classwork folder, look how many folders I have. Now imagine if everybody in my school had that many folders and they were all on this one page. It would take a while to find your work. However, what you can do is you can share folders with other staff members. So for instance, if I want to share um, this particular reading comprehension with um, another staff member, I can select that box next to it, create a copy first. You have to create that copy, that copy, otherwise um, you're giving somebody your original. We click on OK, it will open it up, but not to worry, we'll head back there. You'll see I've got my original and my copy. We're just going to select that button just there, actions and allocate. And that will bring up a list of every staff member in the school who has an Education City account. Select their name and allocate. And it really is that simple to do. Um, and it does, it does save you a lot of time in, time in terms of for your year partner, you can sort of share that work across the board. If, however, you are a job share, um, have a word with your job share partner. See if you want to use the same login because it will save you a lot of time sharing back and forth as well. And how can you see what your students have been doing? Use the tracking function on the home page and have a look at the um, data tracker um, in the success tracker area as well. So um, that is just about everything from me. Um, no questions just yet, but if you have got any in the future, do get in touch. Customer service at educationcity.com. And also while I've got your attention, um, we're well aware that the spotlight on EdTech has been brought to the forefront um, this year. Um, so what we've got is we've got one of our hub schools here at Education City, who is a DFE EdTech demonstrator school. What they can do is they can work with you peer to peer, providing that support um, through their EdTech demonstrator program. And that's something that, you know, they're absolutely fantastic at. Every single one of them that do that program is brilliant. And like I say, they're our hub school as well. So we trust them. Um, we trust them with our lives. If you'd like any more information about that as well, do let me know. That's customer service at educationcity.com. I hope to see you at future webinars, but until then, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.